Over the past two years, REIT share prices have crashed even as their dividend payments kept on rising and as a result, REIT dividend yields are today at the highest levels in a decade. Just a few years ago, it would have required a significant investment in the REIT sector to earn $1,000 of monthly dividend income, but today this is a lot more attainable and in today's video we're going to look at a portfolio that's able to do just that. Hey everyone, this is Yossi, I run a small investment firm that specializes in REIT investing and in today's video I'm going to present to you a high yielding REIT portfolio that's able to generate $1,000 of monthly dividend income with just a $140,000 investment. But before I get into it, could you please do me a huge favor and click the like button that really helped me a lot to grow this channel. Thank you so much in advance. So we've put together a diversified portfolio that includes five REITs. The first one is Crown Castle, which is a cell tower REIT and is today yielding 6.1%. The second one is EPR Properties, which is a net lease REIT yielding 7.5%. The third one is the Series O preferred shares of Gladstone Commercial, an industrial REIT, today offering an 8.6% dividend yield. Fourth, we have the Series A preferred shares of KKR Real Estate Finance, a mortgage REIT, today offering a 9.2% dividend yield. And then finally, our fifth REIT is New Lake Capital Partners, which is a cannabis REIT that's today yielding 11.6%. Put together, this portfolio allows you today to earn an 8.6% dividend yield resulting in $1,000 of monthly dividend income from just a $139,000 investment. You will note here that we use an equal weighting in this portfolio to keep it simple, but we could have earned even more income by allocating more heavily towards the higher yielding peaks like New Lake Capital Partners. Secondly, you will also note that all of these REITs are in a good position to keep paying sustainable dividends and even growing their dividends over time. Again, we could have achieved an even higher yield if we had decided to go after riskier REITs. So let's take a look at each of these individual REITs. The first one, Crown Castle, is probably the safest of this group. This is a mega cap investment grade rated REITs that owns highly consistent and predictable income from infrastructure like assets like cell towers, small cells and fiber. It has a very strong track record of growing its dividend by 9% per year and the management has guided to restart its dividend growth in 2026 and it expects its dividend to grow by 7-8% to per year. That seems very feasible to me because Crown Castle has already contracted most of this growth. The management is very credible. They have a very strong track record. The 5G tailwind keeps attracting a lot of investments into this sector. The REIT also has a relatively low payout ratio and it has a strong investment grade rated balance sheet. Despite that, the REIT is today priced at a historically low valuation and high dividend yield because the REIT is going through a temporary slowdown in its growth and the market doesn't like that since it's heavily focused on short-term results. We recognize that this slowdown in growth is only temporary because it's caused by T-Mobile's recent acquisition of Sprint, which is leading to some lease cancellations over the coming years. But once you remove the impact of these temporary lease cancellations, you will see the growth re-accelerate and with that we think that the stock price will also re-rate a lot higher. So all in all, we think that the 6.1% dividend yield is safe here and we expect significant growth over the long run. Then our second pick for this portfolio is EPO Properties, which is a net lease landlord that specializes in experiential properties such as golf complexes, movie theaters, water parks and ski resorts. Just like Crown Castle's, EPR Properties also earns highly consistent and predictable rental income from long-term leases that have over 10 years terms, the rents are presets, and the leases also include contractual rent escalations. Moreover, EPR also has a strong investment grade rated balance sheet, its payout ratio is today low at around 70% and its cash flow is growing consistently. The REIT hiked its dividend already this year and we think that another hike is very likely to come in 2024. But despite all of this, EPR is today priced at a high 7.5% dividend yield because the market worries about its movie theater portfolio. Again, here we think that the market is overreacting and it's overly pessimistic because the theaters only make up about one quarter of EPR's portfolio as measured by its net asset value. They already have a positive rent coverage and EPR has already restructured its leases with AMC and Regal to mitigate future risks in case of a tenant bankruptcy. So once again, given that EPR has long leases with contractual rent escalations, a strong balance sheet, a low payout ratio, we think that further dividend growth is very likely in the coming years, especially as the movie theaters continues its recovery. 
Then our third pick were the Series O preferred shares of Gladstone Commercial. This is a smaller read than APR Properties and Crown Castle and smaller size comes with higher risk. But overall the business of Gladstone Commercial is strong. It owns mostly industrial properties that benefit from the growing trends of e-commerce and onshoring. Moreover, while its debt is a bit higher than that of EPO and Crown Castle, it has no debt maturities for many years to come. The board of the company recently reduced their common dividend income, which will allow them to retain some liquidity to deleverage gradually over the coming years. While we probably wouldn't invest in the common equity of the company, we really like its preferred equity because it's higher on the capital stack, offers higher margin of safety, and yet its dividend yield is very compelling. Today, the preferred shares are offering an 8.6% dividend yield. We think that this dividend income is sustainable. And on top of that, as the REIT keeps on deleveraging its balance sheet, we expect the market to eventually reward us with a higher valuation. The preferred shares are today priced at a steep discount to their power value. And we estimate that they're offering about 20% upside on top of the dividend yield. So while we won't enjoy dividend growth directly from this position, since it's a preferred equity investment, we expect some gains which could allow us to indirectly grow our dividend income by taking the gains and recycling this capital into other opportunities. Then our fourth position is quite similar to the previous one. We are talking here about the Series A preferred shares of KKR Real Estate Finance. This is also a read that's a bit riskier than average because of its smaller size and higher leverage. Therefore, we probably wouldn't be interested in its common equity, but we really like the preferred equity because it allows us to get a senior positioning relative to the common equity and we're still earning a very high dividend yield of nearly 10%. This is a mortgage REIT and what we like about its business is that its focus is mainly on senior debt investments and most of its collateral are residential properties. Some occasional loan defaults are inevitable in this business, but we believe that KKR's team should be in a strong position to work out solutions. After all, KKR is one of the leading private equity firms in the world. They have great collateral and their loan to values are about 70%. And just like the preferred shares of Gladstone Commercial, the preferred shares of KKR Real Estate Finance also heavily discounted relative to their power value and in our opinion offer some upside potential in addition to the dividend yield. Finally, our fifth and final REIT in this portfolio, New Lake Capital Partners, is offering the highest dividend yield at nearly 12%, but it's also likely our riskiest position. This is a small cap REIT that specializes in cannabis netlist properties, which is a riskier property sector than most others. However, even here we think that the REIT is quite a bit more resilient than what the market gives it credit for, and we think that the dividend cut is very unlikely. On the contrary, New Lake has been steadily growing its dividend in the recent years and it has even had enough liquidity to buy back some shares. The cannabis sector is riskier than average and some lease defaults are inevitable down the line. However, what the market appears to have overlooked here is that New Lake has done a great job at mitigating these risks by focusing on limited license states, properly diversifying its portfolio, focusing on strong operators, and finally by maintaining a pristine balance sheet with zero debt and strong liquidity. Today, despite offering this high dividend yield, the payout ratio is actually only about 80%, leaving enough cash flow for the rate to buy back shares. And as a result of all these accretive share buybacks, as well as the lease escalations that the REIT enjoys, it's expecting to grow its cash flow by about 5% and more growth is expected in 2024. Therefore, we think that a dividend cut is unlikely here and a likelier explanation for this high dividend yield is simply that the market has overreacted and mispriced the stock of this REIT. So here you have a portfolio that's capable of earning you $1,000 of monthly dividend income with just a $139,000 investment. We believe that this dividend income is sustainable, set for future growth, and then on top of that, we also expect this portfolio to enjoy some upside as the market sentiment for REITs recovers in the coming years. It's of course impossible for us to predict what share prices of REITs will do in the short run, but we think that it's unlikely that they drop much more from here, given that the market sentiment for REITs is already at its lowest since the great financial crisis. Finally, I would note that this portfolio could be improved even further. Right now it only includes 5 names, but you could further improve its risk to reward by adding another 10 similar names to add further layers of diversification. That's precisely what we do with our retirement portfolio at High Yield Landlord. Its goal is to maximize safe income and it includes 20 similar opportunities. 
Now, if you want to access our full portfolio, feel free to join High Yield Landlord, which is my REIT newsletter for a two week free trial. I'll put a link to it in the description of this video. And finally, once more, if you could please click the like button, that really helped me a lot to grow this channel. Thank you so much for your support and see you at my next one. Bye bye.